All right, chat, we had some interesting developments from the Street Fighter Twitter account. So they put out a new resource for us to take a look at. Our new character usage page is up on Buckler's Bootcamp. See how popular each character is based on rank and control type. Here's a quick glance at November's rankings. So they actually gave us all the details on the character usage rates from every single rank and also by month. So it's really detailed, really cool graph here that we can go through and uh, get a, uh, it gives us a little bit of a glimpse of how the meta has developed to a degree since Street Fighter 6 is released. But I thought we'd go back and look at the previous stats that they used to give us because before this actual full detailed breakdown, they would give us these updates every month on the top five characters used per these ranking groups. And I thought they were always kind of funny because they always did this thing where they grouped the top three ranks together, Platinum, Diamond, and Master. I feel like they always give a really incomplete view of what characters are being used and for what reason. I feel like a low MR Master rank and a high MR Master rank are worlds apart. Like that's where you see the biggest difference in terms of skill level within one rank is within Master rank itself. There's an ocean apart from like a 2200 player and a 1200 player, right? It's almost like they're playing different games, to be quite honest. So grouping Platinum to Master, I thought was very strange to do. I felt like it really would skew these results, but it was interesting to see regardless. So in June, you know, you, you start to see a pattern like Ryu is always really high up in the early parts of the game and in the lower rankings, but you, you kind of see a trend later on and Ken is in there, Kami. JP sneaks in on the, the top five for June. And then moving on to July, my boy JP nowhere to be seen. He starts falling off, but Ken starts rising to the top here. Ryu's holding on strong. Kami's always popular, Jury popular as well. And Marissa's surprisingly popular. Luke's in there a little bit. August, Ken's still kind of running the show, still all over the place. It's interesting to me that in August, uh, Ryu falls off in rookie, but uh, Ryu is still there, still represented in the lower half ranks and the upper half of ranks and Kami's super popular. Marissa too, Marissa's a pretty popular newcomer. I'm actually kind of surprised how high her usage rate is consistently across these different uh, ranks and months here. And then I'm starting to get some deja vu here, right? Here's August, here's July, August, September. Ken is number three in rookie and number one in the two different sections for every single rank. You see a couple of characters switching around. Kami's pretty consistent as well. But look how consistent Ken is up here, and Marissa and Cami as well, and Jury. Uh, Ryu holding on in the uh, the two ranked tiers here as well. And then October, I mean, deja vu, man. Look, look the only thing that changed between se September and October is this lower quadrant here. Marissa gets booted out for Luke, and then Luke is rising up, man. Luke is trying to take over. Everything else is 100% consistent. Let me give a shout out to Jamie. Jamie's sneaking in here. But one funny thing about the usage rates for lower ranks is as time goes on, I wonder what is a faster rate of change. New players creating new accounts that are in rookie rank and playing in rookie rank, or players who are already existing in rookie rank from the previous month ranking up and therefore the relative usage of the characters are who are left behind in rookie rank. So do we have new Jamie players or are the Jamie players still stuck in rookie and there's and there's more play, people um, making it out of rookie into iron and other ranks? So that's the, the weird thing about this rank thing is you have to you have to consider both rates of change here. It's not a one to one of like, oh, new people are picking up Jamie and the lower ranks. It could be people are ranking up where the other people are left behind. <laughs> so I wonder if there's more new Jamie players or if there's more Jamie players who are a perma stuck and rookie. I'm not sure what it is, but we have the detailed breakdown now, which this page is really awesome. So not only can you see every single rank and their usage rates, you also can go back in the months and look at it. So here we are in, uh, in, in November, and man, there's one consistent factor, is that once you get out, <laughs> once you get out of Iron, Bronze, Silver, or sorry, of Iron, once you get out of Iron, Ken is running the show, dude. He's number one in every rank, which is crazy. And Luke is up there as well. They also show you these arrows to uh, indicate, you know, it, they're, change from the previous month as well. So even though Ken is number one in master, at least he's down 0.9%, right? Yeah, Ryu's up there as well. 
Ryu is always going to be popular. I think Ryu, yeah, he's going to fall off in Master Rank, but Ryu is just Ryu, dude. So many people just pick up Ryu and they've been playing Ryu since 1978. They're never going to stop. Luke has been rising up in the past month. Look, up 0.7%, 1%, 0.3%. Luke usage is up everywhere. <laughs> overall, Luke is up 0.7%. You can see also see the overall usage rates. My boy JP, man, he's, he's down here and he's exactly at the midway point. You guys are talking about how pervasive JP is. I feel like you guys lied to me. I heard so much about how every ranked match was JP. JP is is not as pervasive as you might have think uh might have thought. So I thought it would be cool also to go back to the previous months like from the beginning of the game and see how the meta progressed. Okay, back in June, Ken's still number 1 back in June. A lot of Manon. Uh that's funny cuz I remember early on Manon was definitely a character that people complained about up front. Manon and Marissa were two characters that people were kind of shook about. Manon, the metal system was a big point of discussion. You know, she landed her command grab and it did a third of your life. She definitely did not pan out competitively like people might have suspected she was going to in the beginning. Once people understood how to play neutral against her and how to check her more often, they realized that uh, she don't got that dry rush. Manon was definitely a demon upon release. For sure. Well, let's see who's in master. So this is early on. Yeah, there we go. This is where like 99% of the community is stuck mentally. <laughs> Month one. Uh, Ken JP, number one and number two. So I think early on, these two characters were the ones that got you to master the fastest. So I think early on looking at this is, is really interesting because you're going to see not everyone who belonged in master was in master at this point, right? So I think the number of total people in master rank at this time was like really small. So you can see who, what characters got to master rank early and Ken JP makes total sense, dude. And month one, JP, you could just do any special move and spam projectiles and people would just explode on screen because to counter JP, you have to understand the drive system and the parry system and the JP matchup itself really well. And JP was so foreign at this point that literally everybody just died. So I think every JP player in the beginning of the game got floated to Master Rank, absolutely. And that's where you saw the most complaints. So you had, the whole community had to learn to fight this demon. So seeing him be this high in Master Rank makes perfect sense. Same thing with Ken, I mean, actually very different case with Ken. Ken is just straightforward a gorilla. It didn't really matter if you knew how to parry or not. He's just an offensive gorilla. So that makes sense. DJ up there makes sense. And then see Manon number five. Yeah, she was very early on just uh, an enigma to people. They did not understand her pressure. And then she was scooping people up and people were just dying. So Manon was an early successor who definitely fell off. Honda too. Honda number nine. Hondo, I think, was one of the most shocking characters when the game first released when people didn't understand how to perfect parry him and defend against him properly and headbutts were just running the day in butt splash. So Honda being at number nine makes sense. But then as we go on, can JP Marissa number three? Interesting. Honda's already starting to fall off number 12. Manon went from five to nine. You can see the, the change happening here. Down 0.9%, down 1.2%. Marissa stocks are rising. That's cool. August, Cammy's up there. Ken's going up. JP slowly falling down. I think you slowly just see JP overall master rank usage go down. Honda down another 1.1%. Manon down 0.7%. These two just keep dropping and dropping. And Luke keeps rising. I think Luke is the other one to look at. Over time, more and more people just keep playing Luke and realize how strong he is and, and, and become accustomed to him. Yep, Luke up 1.2%. Finally, JP. This is the first time JP gets knocked out a second, right? So JP in September drops from two to four. <clears throat> More camis and Ryu's in JP. That's 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 surprising actually. I think this is all the lifelong Ryu players finally cracking master rank. Luke up here, 1.2%. Manon down to 11. And Honda, uh, he just keeps dropping. Yeah, it's not looking good for our boy, our boy Honda for sure. And then finally, Luke Supremacy. Ken stays exactly the same. Ken has been so consistently number one. That's so crazy to me. Luke is up there. Ryu's up there. JP, he keeps falling, man. Manon, Honda. <laughs> yeah, Manon and Honda had the hardest fall offs. I mean, Dalsum, Lily, and Blanca, they're going to be bottom three forever. People just don't want to play those characters. And there we have Ken, Luke, Supremacy, DJ up there, Cami. Ryu is the only one who's like, what are you doing here? If you if you judge the usage rates based on uh, tier list, Ryu is the one that doesn't belong. This is JP downplay propaganda. No, JP is definitely that good. I'm just surprised that I'm honestly surprised that he's not used more. I figured he'd be up here. I was actually surprised to see this. The reason why I'm bringing that up, because when I saw the the ranks with the with the platinum diamond and master rank group together, JP was 
never in here and i figured okay that must be because that must be because jp is all in master rank and then the average is being drowned out by all the platinum and diamond uh people but then you look at the overall ones and that's sort of true jp is lower in the lower ranks because they all get floated to master but then he's still not dominating in master rank then yeah even aki is being used more than manan here in the end aki was a much more successful character than Rashid in terms of usage and adoption rates. Um, I think Rashid's a really good character. I think Rashid is much stronger competitively, to be quite honest. But Rashid is more complex. I think Aki has kind of a simple game plan, but has a lot of offensive set play options to learn as you go on. I think Rashid is really complex, actually. He's a very awkward character to use, even though he's very, very good. And Aki, I think, is just a slam dunk design. I think people really like her design out of the gate so she's very pop popular to use but also she's newer we'll see if she falls off a bit more in usage rates yeah but the one constant dj's been up there luke finally came into fruition like look at him across the board i'm surprised that his usage rate was so much lower in the beginning look at that 11 9 8 slowly creeped up on us i mean he's been there in the top 10 month after month six 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 eight rather crack the top five in platinum and master in september four two yeah so it took it took a couple of months before we started seeing luke rise to the occasion but i think people finally realized how good he is and just warmed up to the character but ken number one across the board obviously your your experiences may vary i i think a lot of i don't think i know your experience will vary because the matchmaking regions are still region locked. So whatever bubble you're placed into for matchmaking is going to influence what characters you see, especially at the higher ranks where there's going to be less people in that bubble. Because matchmaking is not just based on connection or ping or rank. You're absolutely placed into a regional matchmaking server and then you're forced to only play people in that server, which prevents you from matching with a lot of people outside of that region wherever you are in the world and what match invisible matchmaking server you get placed into is going to heavily influence the people you see so you might be in a region where you run into guile and zangief all the time for example or something like that right or a bunch of hondas and kimberly's because for me personally i feel like i run into kimberly and zangief more than i run into a lot of these characters i, I don't see ryu that often so your rank also influences it and master rank that does do it does try to make it an effort to match you with people of closer mr range so if you're in a, a lower mr range with in master rank you might see a lot more reused but i hardly ever see ryu ken i see a decent amount but i see more luke than ken i think i definitely don't get jamie that often or marissa so yeah your experiences will absolutely vary but i did think it was just overall kind of interesting to see these stats see how things change from month one to to now six months later been pretty interesting to see and the one constant is ken masters absolutely i wonder if they'll ever do mr charts people have made efforts to do their own which obviously run on slightly incomplete data but that is out there like the data on uh players over 1900 mr number one and two is like always ken and jp why not make your own chart i'm not going to go through digging through cfn to get data like that why not work for several hours for free <laughs> Well, people like to make those kind of things and then you get buzz on social media. And for me personally, to be honest, if I tabulate stats and I put it into a piece of content, there is a return on that, potentially. I would have to say, I think Rashid and Blanca are the two least used compared to how strong they are. I think Rashid and Blanca are very good and Guile. I think Guile and, and Chun-Li and the bottom half, Chun-Li, Guile, Rashid and Blanca are a, incredibly underused. I think these characters are amazing. I think Sim is pretty good, but I would still put him under those characters, but I would put him above the others. He's Sim, you know, he takes, you have to learn a lot to use Sim, but clearly to me, Chun-Li, Guile, Rashid and Blanca are better. Apart from Rashid, are they not used because they are a charge? Uh, I think guile is just boring maybe you're onto something i never consider that to me charge has never been an issue but that's a perspective that i need to be open-minded to a lot of people still don't don't like charge characters i think charge characters are stupid easy because <laughs> that's what i was molded by it's, it's like so ingrained into my brain but there's a lot of people who just say they they can't play charge but that could be a, an influencing factor for sure and why these characters are not used as much when I learned Street Fighter 4 and I picked up Balrog, I was like, wait, I'm winning. You know, I started with Ryu and I'm like, all right, this is Street Fighter. Then I tried Balrog and I'm like, wait, I'm winning. 
<laughs> it was that easy for me. Once you get it, you get it. If you don't get it, it seems like a, a world away. You'll never understand it. So I understand. I, I get why people would be intimidated by it. 